We had a discussion about how fast the world is changing when we look at investment in landscapes. And it's changing very fast indeed. Um, the Nature Conservancy, after all, has been buying lands for 60 years. But what's happened in the last four or five years is, is that there's been a realization that there are that, that investing in land is just a good idea, that, that there's enormous returns to be had that are not inconsistent with conserve, conserving um, the, the natural value of the assets in that land. Um, one of the challenges of the conservation movement when it comes to landscapes is that the focus has been so heavily on carbon um, and the impact of uh, deforestation and other interventions in landscapes that uh, either reduce the absorptive capacity of those landscapes um, from sequestering carbon dioxide in the atmosphere or worse still um, in the deforestation um, process uh, lead to greater emissions um, directly. Um, and so there's been a global movement, um, the most visible part of which might be the Red Plus initiative, um, to try to convert uh, the mitigation of deforestation um, into uh, carbon credits that could be sold and traded on various carbon markets around the world. We're still in the early stages of that, and I think there's a general sense of uh, disappointment um, that those markets have not already had the impact um, that people would hope they would have when they were conceived on um, protecting uh, the tropical forests from um, uh, further destruction. That it, it is helping and it will help, but it's not the whole story. So what we heard about yesterday was some of the other ways in which um, landscape can generate uh, investment income. And we also heard about the enormous amount of capital that's available uh, and lining up really um, on, on the sidelines to come and participate in this market. Um, so we're at a very interesting point in time where that sort of confluence of better understanding of the value of landscape and appetite on the part of investors to invest in those landscapes um, is, is, is converging and, and, and seeing a lot of change right now. Yeah, I think it, 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 absolutely. Um, there's no question about that. So what are the signs of that? Um, so one sign of it, is, it, and this will sound a little bit remote from the world of landscapes, but one sign of it is that we're seeing uh, a very big movement um, towards disinvestment from fossil fuel companies. Um, now, that uh, is not just uh, the activity of lobbying journalistic um, initiatives. That's really happening with real investors. Um, you could look at uh, the Norwegian Sovereign Wealth Fund, you could look at fund managers um, who are looking very closely at the um, uh, the stranded assets question like generation investment management and those are in the vanguard but you're seeing many following them, many are asking the same question can we really own the shares of coal companies and even oil companies, even gas companies in the long term given where the planet's got to go uh, in, in, in relation to carbon emissions and the answer is no we can't and people know that, it's just a question of how quickly they come to act on it. Now, if you start disinvesting from those asset classes, where's the money going to go? Traditionally, where that money's gone, it's either been allocated to the rest of your portfolio, so you just exit one, one class of securities and you redistribute across everything else you own. That's one thing you could do. But you could also take a more proactive approach and invest in, for example, renewables, or you could invest in um, energy efficiency, and so forth. And, and there's now the problem with those asset classes is that they're still relatively young and they're relatively small compared with the fossil fuel industry for which you're disinvesting. But that's changing very fast, very fast indeed. And people are seeing that you know investing in solar, investing in energy efficiency can be very attractive. Now that isn't the same thing as investing in landscapes. But what the world is waking up to is the fact that you know one third of uh, sequestration of carbon emissions is absorbed by um, tropical forests and other land-based ecosystems. And they're saying to themselves, hang on a minute, let's compare the cost of sequestering or avoiding the emission of a gigaton of carbon. Um, let's compare the cost of doing that through investment in restoring or protecting landscapes versus making that an investment of the same amount uh, in energy efficiency or in renewables or other alternative fuels. And so there is no question that these are going to converge and there's enough appetite in mainstream investors, pension funds, life companies, sovereign wealth funds, banks, 
there's no question they're asking they're, they're asking the, the deep questions now about how do we do this not whether we're going to do it but how do we do it